I'm Nick Miles for Dick Hanna Jeep. We're actually in Montana today to take a look at the brand new Grand Wagoneer L and the Wagoneer L. They have grown by 12 inches to give you more space. We're gonna take a look at the exterior. We're gonna take a look at the interior and put them on the road and find out why Americans get a little more room in this brand new SUV. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified every time a new video goes up online. Now I want to spend a little time on interior design because this has been very specifically designed very much like you would see a house uh, beautifully designed. Um, and take a second here, in Montana, of course, you're gonna see lots of wildlife. There are cows here wandering on the road. This vehicle is not just about what catches the eye, but the design here is about what catches the tactile responses as well of the fingertips. So everything has been designed on the plane of longitude. Uh, it's wide, it's spacious. It has been designed on the shape of a wing as a wide open space. And the designers have stretched everything out. They want you to feel spacious on the inside of both the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. This, of course, is America's third luxury brand. This vehicle is beautiful. It is nicely crafted. It is artisan. You will notice leather. You will notice double stitching. You will notice attention to detail. The colors have been specifically chosen. The designers took sea salt, and it's not just the single color of sea salt. They took the grains of sea salt, and they looked at those grains in angular light, and they decided which exact color on the side of the angles of sea salt before they chose the color of the sea salt leather that they have on the interior of the Grand Wagoneer. They looked at agave and this dark blue agave color. They looked very carefully at the plant before they chose the correct blue of the agave leather. So it was a very long and complicated process before they felt very comfortable with the right colors on the interior. And it, it does feel nice, it feels calming, it gives you a sense of warmth. Look at how everything is put together. The actual words Grand Wagoneer are laser etched metal inside the wood along the dash. The passenger screen on the right, you cannot see that screen inside the piano black unless it's illuminated. It disappears. The infotainment screen, if it is not illuminated, disappears inside the piano black here in the center stack. The switches here, they disappear inside the piano black of the center stack when they're not illuminated. But when you touch them, they also become tactile. It's the same for the gear shifter. It has tactile feeling when you rub your fingers around it, that laser etched beveling around the edges of it. So everything doesn't just look good, it feels good. Everything doesn't just have a purpose for the eye, it has a purpose for the fingers. Even the starter button is surrounded with double stitched leather in this agave blue, surrounded by beautifully finished wood, and then a beveled piece of metal around the exterior. It's a lot of work to make everything perfectly finished in this material. They don't just feel good, they light up, up. They have um, beautiful accented LED lighting throughout the cabin to really make you feel a sense of space. So everything was worked to give you a sense of comfort, a sense of luxury, a sense of space. And on top of that, 
uh, things like the Macintosh sound system, the speakers sort of disappear into the doors, but they, they have a sense of length and they have light up portions in the doors. There's lighting embedded into the doors. So there's a sort of a marriage of metal, leather, wood, sound, feeling, come together on the interior of the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, from simple and usable in the Wagoneer to comforting, plush, and luxury on the Grand Wagoneer. So technology on the inside of the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. Now you have levels of technology from a heads up display, driver gauges and infotainment. You have a passenger screen. Um, let's talk about those individually and let's first of all talk about the heads up display. So you can have between one piece of information and five pieces of information available on the heads up display. You can actually program it to have the level of information that you want between those one to five pieces of information. Right now I have three pieces of information. I have the maximum speed allowed on the road. I have the speed that I'm traveling and I have my GPS information in my heads up display currently. Then I have my gauge cluster in front of the steering wheel. This is a thin TFT screen. It currently is giving me the information of my GPS. The map is laid out in front of me. I have my speed and several other pieces of information too that I have chosen to have in front of me. And it's very much how the infotainment display is in other brands, but again, I've chosen to have what I want in this. Now, you can have things like night vision on this uh, gauge cluster in front of me, or you can have more traditional. Now, you can change that information simply by using the rockers on the um, steering wheel. I can choose to have things as simple as uh, my miles driven, my miles per gallon. It's my choice about what I should decide I want in my gauge cluster in front of me. Then there is your infotainment screen. And this is where things get exceedingly more informational. You can use that to either have navigation information, but with the Uconnect system, you always will have your buttons displayed at the bottom and you can toggle through those at any time. Um, going through those, the apps on the right will give you all of your apps and in the top of the screen, you can choose your favorites, your recents, your categories and your all. Now, this is a fully programmable screen. You you can drag and drop your information when needed here. And so you can move around your icons to have your favorites where you want them. If you want to scroll up and down, you can see the massive amounts of information here. And there are certain things that I want to point out to you. You can do things like drop the headrests in the second and third row. That's super um, useful if you want to drop the seats. You have your Wi-Fi, of course. Uh, you can't go on a family road trip without Wi-Fi. Things as simple as weather information too, emergency connections, USB information here, over-the-air software uh, updates as well, preheating, pre-cooling seats here as well. Um, you can do a lot of those things, connecting phones, uh, tire alerts, driver profile so you can set it. This is a great piece of information here, the fam cam. So this is something thing if you have a family the fam cam is absolutely great so let's imagine that you don't know what's going on in the back seats you have a camera here that faces every seat now this is great if you have a child in the back seat and you want to see what's going on especially if you have a baby you can tap in 
it zooms into that seat and you can take a closer look at that child seat. And to me, that is a perfect way to check up on what's going on with the kids in the back row. Another great reason that we should be uh, using this as a system. And there you go, back to your information here displays. So in entertainment, Alexa, another great reason to have this vehicle. Uh, you can use your Alexa Assistant and then also ambient color changes in the back here. Now changing your Bluetooth information, device manager as well. Um, going through this, you can get a ton of information and of course your assistant here. You can check in here, get your Wagoneer Care, your connected services, your roadside assistance just from a touch of a button. Help is on its way. So there's a lot of stuff packed into this. And then you have your passenger screen up front here as well. And your passenger screen will actually also allow the front seat passenger to do multiple things. They can check on the back seat passengers to see what they're watching on their screens. They can also do something to assist the driver by looking up destinations. And once they've found those on the satellite navigation system, they can send that to the main screen. So for instance, if the person in the navigation seat wants to send uh, something to the driver and say, hey, I'm going to look up a restaurant, send it to the front here, they can send that to the driver's screen. So they look up a destination for the driver or they can actually watch a Netflix movie there with their headphones while the driver's driving. And the driver can't see that screen, so it's actually safe for them as well. Used to be back in the day, everybody wanted to sit in the back seat because that's where they could watch the movies. Well, now uh, the shotgun seat is where everybody wants to sit because that's the seat that has great control here as well. So that is the screen space. Huge selection of USB ports up front here. There are USB ports for the back. Uh, there are three A's and uh, three C's, uh, HDMI port, and also the usual cigarette standard lighter for a 12 volt DC. Um, you also have your air suspension. You can choose the level of air suspension here, as well as a four low all wheel drive and a uh, four wheel drive button. And then as well as your rotary shifter, which has a beautiful beveled edge as well. And of course, uh, your wireless charger. And if you shut your wireless charger door, you get that beautiful screen that comes down here, which allows you to choose your massaging seats. Um, and you can choose all the different programs here, as well as the massaging seats button in the door. And that is as well where the seat controls are in the door as part of the beautiful inlaid wood uh, on the door panels of this vehicle. And then you have all of your controls for the roof, your SOS and your assistance buttons right here by the mirror as well. You have your optional uh, big large paneled roof in the center, which has the sunscreen as well, which comes across the middle. Now, just like you would find in any luxury vehicle, it has your beverage cooler in the middle here. I put my hand in, it's been pre-cooled, so you can have your beverages for that long road trip on the inside here, with a nice pre-cooled fridge style beverage cooler in the center console. Let's talk about driving this vehicle and some of the um, other driving features of it. First of all, a new Hurricane engine, uh, two Hurricane engines actually. There is the Hurricane 510, which has 510 horsepower, a brand new engine for a Wagoneer and a Jeep. And then there is the plain Hurricane engine, which is everything but plain, uh, which has 420 horsepower. This vehicle actually improves fuel economy over the previous engines in this vehicle. And uh, by uh, up to five, miles a gallon um, in the regular Hurricane engine and in the 510 up to two miles a gallon. But they've also increased the fuel tank size, which uh, you can get actually seven 
100 miles out of a tank um, in the regular Hurricane engine, which has 420 horsepower, and the 510 horsepower engine, you'll get about 579 miles out of a single tank. Now, whichever engine you get, it's a great performing vehicle. We happen to have the Hurricane 510 right now, and put your foot down, and we're in sport mode, so. There you go, that is 80 miles an hour, uh, very fast. So a great performing vehicle, uh, not too shabby, I will tell you. So let's talk about drive modes while we're here. There are five different drive modes in this vehicle. Uh, there is uh, down here in the center console stack, there is rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. Now, of course, I'm that guy who likes it to be in sport all the time, but of course, if you're on a long road trip, you probably want it in auto and sport just when you are doing some of the dynamic driving um, around town. Amazingly enough, that Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer rocketed to the number two spot in the first six months of this year after being released because Americans fell in love with this new luxury all-American brand. It was perfect for the all-American lifestyle and is the third luxury brand in America after uh, Cadillac and Lincoln and seems to fit perfectly with everything Americans wanted to do. Uh, three rows of artisan crafted luxury outdoor life. So we decided to do a little off-roading with the new Wagoneer and it's sort of what we would call more adventure lifestyling. This is what a family might be doing in forest roads, gravel roads, heading to a campsite. This is exactly the American weekend road trip adventure it's the great outdoors, dusty, a little uneven surfaces heading to the plains of Montana. And this is the sort of conditions where the surface is a little bit risky, a little bit uncertain, bumpy, slidey, um, and some points you need the all-wheel drive to slip and to, to deal with the road surface that slips away. We've been in some gravel that's a little deep, and guess what? No problems with this vehicle coping. Uh, we're gonna get a little more treacherous as we get on, but this is what this vehicle is built for. That is me showing you that the Grand Wagoneer is a vehicle you should own because it made mincemeat of that Waterford crossing. These vehicles can do 30 inches of water crossing. Um, that is why they are the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer and they are superior to most of the competition because they are amazing vehicles. So it's an all-round family vehicle, plus the third row, plus plenty of room for everybody. It's a really great infotainment system, and that doesn't even start with the safety and security systems and some of the best-in-class stuff we've already mentioned on this vehicle. Now, the Grand Wagoneer L has a beautiful and luxurious front grille. You can see a lot of the front grille is laser etched. It is finished very nicely and looks like it's luxurious. This very nice silver grille with the black inlays here at the front. Of course, it's seven slat, which makes sure that you know it's part of the Jeep family. And this nice chrome look front grille really gives it that nice luxurious finish as well. And of course it has that piano black around the middle of the grille. Now notice the shape of the front of this vehicle. It still gives a nod to the very, very nice original 1962 Wagoneer. It has this shark nose front end where actually the top of the front end comes out further than the bottom. Uh, just like you would see in a shark itself where the nose comes out further at the front, so does the this. Now, laser etched Wagoneer name on the top here. It has this copper color around the outside, brass sort of copper color 
on the edges of the W and on the edges of each letter. And then of course around is this silver color. These are LED lights at the front here. That's the same on every Wagoneer. If it's a grand or a regular Wagoneer, it still gets LED lights around the front. It's a nice big front grille, very masculine, very bold. Tow hooks at the bottom, of course. A Wagoneer is capable off-road. It has a great four by four system, all wheel drive. This vehicle, of course, comes in three different levels. It's the regular Wagoneer, then series two, then series three, depending on what kind of capability you want for your outdoor adventure. All right, chrome around this black grill at the bottom here, the air intakes, uh, black, and then black air intake at the bottom and chrome at the very, very bottom level here. Now, a big bold grill all the way around the front. You have your LED lights at the bottom here. Let's come around the side, nice big wheels. Talking to the Wagoneer designers, one thing that they wanted was every time you looked at this car, they wanted you to discover something new about Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. So every time you walked around the vehicle, there should be another discovery about the design of the vehicle. Laser etched behind a piece of glass here is the name Wagoneer in the center of the wheel caps. Two-toned wheels with laser etched beveling on those. Grand Wagoneer name across the bottom of the door similar to what is on the hood with this copper uh, brass style coloring on the edge of the letters, again, laser etched. American flag as a nod to our servicemen and women here at the end of the Wagoneer name, a nice, piece of bezeling across the bottom of the doors here. And of course, if you open the door, it has this fold out step to help you get in and out of the vehicle. Uh, mirrors here in piano black with a piece of silver at the bottom, LED lights, the camera at the bottom of the mirror. Of course, it has blind spot in these as well. The only place you'll see Jeep in the vehicle written at all is here at the bottom of the mirrors as we begin this piece of chrome which goes along the bottom of the daylight opening space. There is of course chrome all the way around the daylight opening space. Nice black uh, piano across the A pillars here as well, which starts the bottom of the door and the barrel shaped, which goes around the body piece here. Very muscular type fenders here, comes into the barrel shape of the door. Uh, they have nice door handles here with the single touch opening of the doors and it is black on the bottom um, and the top of the door handles. Carrying on down the body panels here, a uh, nice door line here at the bottom, and then coming into the rear fender uh, on this Grand Wagoneer, the uh, piece of cladding is the same color as the body panel. Coming around here, reflector at the back of the panel, and then we come into this piece of cladding, which is piano black again, and into the door sill here. At the back, this is a reflection of the front lights here, uh, the piece of silver which goes across the whole of the back uh, surrounding the lights. Again, the name Grand Wagoneer across the back reflecting what was across the hood at the front. Camera, nice piece of piano black across the back. And to open the vehicle here, one single touch at the back, just to the right of the camera. There's a slight difference in space behind the third row for cubic feet in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. It's 42 for the Wagoneer and 44 cubic feet for the Grand Wagoneer. Now jumping into the third row, there is actually the same leg room for the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. That's 36 inches back here and that's loads of room. But the convenience of being back in the third row is what's really cool back here. Now adjustments. There is electronic recliners here. That's right, you can put this seat into multiple positions, which is ever most comfortable for you, you can do that. There is also electronic headrests uh, adjustments from the front screen here. There is two USB ports on both sides, plus a cup holder. Convenience, your kids may never get out of the third row.
Now, there are multiple facets in the second row as well. You can actually uh, use these seats for Fire TV. You have two 10.5 inch screens. You can either use your HDMI cords or you can have uh, independent streaming here. I can join different networks. I can also use the remote control here. There are pre-programmed games. I can use things like Amazon Prime TV, Amazon Music, YouTube. There is the Disney Channel, Red Bull TV, Tubi whichever I like, the Jeep channel, I can use the library of on board, or I can stream other things directly from uh, the internet. You have map pockets, Bluetooth headphones, I have two USB ports each side, I have my screen with climate controls, my cup holders, huge big bin here, um, is a nice leather finished uh, center console here as well, my seat is fully adjustable, I have window controls, two speakers, I have a manual sunshade here, grab handles, I have microphone speakers here, grab handle in the ceiling, I mean it is like a first class airline seat, plus uh, access to the panoramic sunroof, my own light, I mean seriously, who doesn't want to fly in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer? Now, if you're interested in getting a Grand Wagoneer L or a Wagoneer L in your driveway, Dick Hanna Jeep have three different ways to get hold of them. You can pick up the phone and call them. You can come visit the dealership or find them online.